Hey, Gemini, how y'all doing? Welcome. We are going to be taking a look at your October through November, your Maven through Samhain seasonal general reading here. So just a quick note, while we are looking at the time from just after the autumnal equinox on September 22nd in through the month of October and November, even if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, just flip it and reverse it. You're you're looking at the, you know, just past the spring equinox towards Beltane and then in towards the summer. It's two sides of the same coin. So in the north, we're going towards the coming of the darkness. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're going towards the return of the light. It's still incredibly similar messages just from the, you know, opposite side of the coin. So wherever you are in the world, <laughs> you can take these messages to heart and just, you know, contextualize them for yourself, depending on where you are in the world and what resonates for you. So jumping right in here, in your meditation, I immediately saw a train um, that was underground, it looked like a bullet train, and it was underneath the earth, and it was moving underneath the earth, and it was going from these like stations where it was picking up supplies at this station and going to the next one, picking up some passengers, the next one, and then going in. And it felt like it was um, like getting its supplies up, like it was a supply run. And then I saw it go to the end of the you know track that was underground and the track started to go up. So it was coming out of the underground into the light, up, 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 very steep hill. And then it stopped at the top, leveled out. And then I saw this barrier come up in front of it, like, waiting your turn, waiting for the next thing to come. Um, I feel very strongly, <laughs> Gemini, that there's a lot of things that are going to be changing for you. Um, number one, this whole aspect of the supply thing, I saw this image of this card from the Akashic Tarot called Wishes Fulfilled. Um, and in that key, in, in that deck specifically, how that is rendered is it's a supply room filled with all these different fruits and vegetables and, you know, similar to the season that we're looking at here in terms of Maven. And this is also, you know, about getting your harvest together so that you're prepared for the winter. You're gathering everything close to you so that you have everything that you need as we go into the dark time of the year. And so the fact that I saw that card, I'm just trying to find it for you here to show it to you. The fact that I saw that card and then I, you know, saw the train sort of, it was kind of waylaid and it wasn't able to move forward past a certain point. It really feels to me like for right now, especially during this season, this is a time of really looking at what you want to take with you into the next year and what you might want to transform. That feels like a major theme of this reading because I do feel like, and it's reflected here in your cards, where there are aspects of your experience, whether this is your job, your relationship, your relationship to your job or your family, or even an aspect of you, here it is, wishes fulfilled. That's what I saw in your meditation. Look at all of that. Stocked up. We'll just leave this here, shall we? Um, it feels like there are aspects within and around you that aren't quite um, fulfilling, that aren't quite reflective of this well-stocked pantry <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. And I feel like part of it, uh, like a hint around this, is what is your comfort zone and how might your comfort zone be dictating or influencing or even fear your past choices? It's time to ask yourself that question because here with your Oracle straw bale, it's time you step out of your comfort zone, take up space and reach new heights. There's something about that train going up the hill and they're just waiting there. It feels like there's going to be things that are removed and transformed from your experience over the next couple of months. Um, but it also feels like that's just going to leave more room in the larder for what you do want. So there's a lot of change, like a train station going to different stops. It does feel like there's a lot of change coming up for you. Now, you are coming through as the wolf, which is oh, one of my absolute favorites. You know, this is beautiful because wolf is hierophant energy, right? It's Taurus energy. And the tagline for that is I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. Everything is exactly as it's meant to be. So when this energy comes up for you, this is a very positive sign that, you know, throughout any changes or any stirrings within you that are going, you know what? I am not happy with this. Or you know what? I really am feeling like I need to change this within myself, change this around me, you know, shift, you know, some relationship in my life, 
um, hire someone else, uh, look elsewhere, look elsewhere for you know my friend group or what fulfills me. There's really something about that. And when you're coming through as the wolf, you can really lean on your instincts and also again know that there's such a comfort in that feeling of you know even as things shift and change, even as I'm going through a time of transition. I'm, it's all happening as it's meant to. So everything feels very divinely orchestrated right now for you, Gemini. And so the best thing you can do is flow. <laughs> flow through it and pay attention, right? I feel like there's going to be an increasing amount of signs and messages, and I'm hearing the writing on the wall will be marked in bold. I just heard that. The writing on the wall will be marked in bold. There's going to be some things that you're just Probably things that you've already, you know, suspected that you're just going to be made very aware of. And again, this could be something within you, but it's also something in your surroundings as well. It's like, ugh, I just know I need to change this. I just know that I've been avoiding this for a minute and I can't ignore this anymore. And this is really for my highest and best good. So let me get about it. Let me look at what's keeping me from wanting to make this change or sit with the, you know, possible effects of, you know, making this choice. So. Something to think about, but the wolf, whew, when you're able to move through and, and carve out your path from a place of instinct and knowing and being able to see clearly even when it's dark, you're you're right exactly on track. And that's that was another thing that I saw in the meditation was another card from this deck, which is called On Track, which is just a picture of a train um, and a sign that says On Track on it. So definitely you're, you're where you're meant to be right now and you're learning some soul lessons um, that is going to transform your experience. I'm hearing very much so you're being prepped for 2025. Okay, being prepped for 2025. Now, you're also coming through as the Ace of Wands and the Two of Pentacles. So this is brilliant. There's a, there's a lot of, you know, energy happening. This is a new beginning. This is a burst of inspiration. This is an idea. This is an awareness. This is something where I go, oh, this is like, I want to make it, you know, a new beginning in this way, shape or form is virility. This is, you know, feeling like, oh, like I, I, I feel so motivated and sure around this. And you have the two pentacles, which is, you know, it's, it's juggling, it's juggling, you know, work and life. It's, it's considering your options. It's, it's enacting a certain level of balance. It's considering one thing versus the other. So there's a lot of energy, a lot of stuff going on for you this season, Gemini. Very much feels that way. I also, you know, whenever I see these, you know, two pentacles with the infinity sign there, it's also on the magician key and the strength key. That's a very Gemini energy to me. Like, even though it's pentacles, which are earth signs, you guys are so brilliant, especially like your personal genius lies in being able to see two things equally clearly at the same time. You can see both sides of an argument, uh, both sides of a, like a pro and con scenario better than any other sign. There is duality baked into your makeup if you are a Gemini. So a way to lean into that superpower and really utilize that for your best good is to be willing to look at both sides of something and ask yourself, if you're considering making a change for an example, right, really ask yourself, what would happen if I did nothing? Or what would happen if I did make this change? And weigh them up against each other. You know, play the magic if game with yourself. And imagine what it might be like having made the change. And then ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen? And then ask yourself, what's the best that could happen? That is Gemini magic. What's the worst that could happen? What's the best that could happen? Holding those up and giving them equal space in your mind is going to be incredibly revealing and very motivating. Okay. So in your place of challenge, you're coming up as the nine of wands. So this makes sense, you know, with the ace of wands here, inevitably enough of that, you're going to get to a nine of wands moment. Um, this is funny because this is kind of reminding me of that train track. I mean, it's, it's technically an upward staircase, but it's reminding me of that train track and then how it was going up that steep hill and then stopping. Pretty interesting. Um, Nine of Wands traditionally is that wounded warrior, but remember the wands rule the realm of the actions that we do or do not take around our soul purpose, around the work that we do, well, about what really you know gives us passion and, and what we wake up for in the morning, right? So the fact that this is coming up in the place of your challenge, I see some fatigue, I see some you know weariness, maybe some world weariness, kind of feeling like, oh, this is 
there's a lot of stimuli going on and, and it's, it's building up a bit, but I'm just hearing like, while well, it might get a little bit steep up ahead because there is a lot going on and I do really feel the fatigue within you. I also feel like what you're working towards is just so incredibly worth it. If you can just turn around and see how far you've come at certain points along the way, that also is going to be incredibly motivating to finish it through and to keep going, right? So in your place of advice, I mean, <laughs> this is always good advice, but I do believe, yeah, this is your, well, aside from the wolf, it's your, you know, single major arcana here, which denotes, you know, faded or destined events, big deals in your life. So your vice is the hanged man. This is also part of your, you know, Gemini superpower. I think this card, this key is Gemini energy to me, right? The hanged man. It's about taking a time out to flip your perspective, to be it's not just seeing things differently. It's being willing to see things differently. And see how this is a bat here as well? We are looking at the correct time of year to have the bat energy come up. But part of why this is so brilliant is because this is about shadow work too. It's about being willing to, you know, embrace the darkness and see what's hidden within and around you. That's, that's the thing with that two of pentacles, right? And that ace of wands. What's the best that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? Really be willing to see, be willing to add, engage with yourself from a place of curiosity so that cuts through the fear and then you have access to all the information available to you. But sometimes, Gemini, it's it, really for you especially because you guys have a lot of natural energy. I've never met a Gemini in my life that didn't have enough energy for three people. Like, that's part of it. So sometimes the challenge for you can be really finding peace within the slowing down and, and peace within the, you know, stagnant state that it requires to actually reach any sort of clarity, right? Now, in your place of victory, ooh la la, you've got two nines here, by the way, that are mirroring each other. So nine is the completion point before you finish out a cycle at number 10. So I'm telling you, this time of year is getting you ready for like a very new reality in 2025, right? Nine of Pentacles coming up as your victory. Now, this is stunning. You know, this is about independence. It represents the entrepreneur, but this is really feeling incredibly self-satisfied in something that you're achieving, right? This can be work that you feel really satisfied in or proud of yourself. This could be a personal goal that you've set for yourself because remember the pentacles are about the body, the home, our physical experience, our material health and wealth. So you could be feeling really, really good about some physical reality or changes that you've made or that are happening for you, manifesting for you in your life. Things that you've been working towards that are coming into physical manifestation, right? This is where it's like, show me the money, right? This is where things, you're seeing the physical you know, results of your efforts, which is wonderful. I'm here for that. So the fact that that's your victory it's beautiful. And, you know, I can't ignore the fact that we saw that train with bringing stuff on board and, and filling the, you know, the stocks here. We have the wishes fulfilled and it's you've got earth energy here with Taurus and more pentacles here. I do feel like there could be um, some happy changes either around the money that you make, how you make your money or something in your personal circumstances are upgraded or made easier. Something comes through and it's like, oh, that makes things easier. Oh, that. Oh, that's, woo, that feels really nice. And it does feel something that's related to your monetary, something about your physical experience, right? Your health, your wealth, your, your home, your day-to-day -day experience feels incredibly good. Incredibly good. So in your place of outcome, you have king of swords, which is brilliant. This is you in your masculine form, right? So that's always auspicious. It's always a good sign. You know, another nighttime energy here, nighttime predator with, well, they actually are, are day and night, but they can see just as well as night as they can during the day, right? This owl energy and the bat energy and the wolf energy, <laughs> other energies here. There is really, you know, the, key, the word that I'm hearing is illumination and clarity, those two keywords. So the king of swords, the fact this is coming in as your outcome, this is you living your best life in your most aligned version of you, right? This is where you're seeing things clearly, objectively. I, I love that saying, um, clarity goes where objectivity flows. It's beautiful. It's, it's very, very true. I feel like this is the outcome of you taking the advice and assuming the hanged man position. You're really going to be feeling like even to a fine point there with the sword, like you truly understand what your options are. You've thought it through and you feel very confident about the changes that are coming. Very, very confident. And here's the thing. You can either move or be moved. 
That's the truth of life, right? And so I feel like you feel, I feel like right now, if you're watching this and this is for you, you're like, yeah, I already know some of these things that want to change or that the writing on the wall has been coming, becoming increasingly bold or whatever it is. And it's a matter of, can I co-create with what wants to be moved within and around me, right? Or am I just going to let it happen to me and then I don't have as much as a say and I'm getting dragged along in the caboose as opposed to sitting in the first class car, you know, <laughs> with the good eats. <laughs> so that's the question. I feel like the fact that you're coming out of here, you know, as the King of Swords says, that's very much what you're choosing to do by assuming the hangman position, asking yourself those that two-sided question and really getting clear about what in your life is changing for your highest and best good and how can you be a part of that? How can you co-create that, right? How can you be the auteur of your own change experience that's happening for you during the season of change, right? You're very aligned with the seasons in this, right? It's, it's all really beautiful. So we talked about this a bit already. This is your Maven Oracle. This is Straw Bale. It's time you step out of your comfort zone, take up space and reach new heights. This is about what you're worth, allowing yourself to be paid what you're worth, to be treated, you know, how you're worthy of being treated. This is about confidence, right? This is about that magical delusion <laughs> that we all need a good dose of to go, I am truly meant to stand out in this world, you know, make an abundance of income, have, you know, abundantly beautiful reciprocal, reciprocal relationships, and live out loud. That's what this is, right? This is giving yourself permission to stand in the light and receive. Which, by the way, it sounds wonderful. It's not always easy because we often have a lot of belief systems or thoughts where it's like, oh, you know, not me, or oh, I couldn't, you know, I don't know about that. I don't know if that would, how that would really feel. If you have a natural instinct where it's like, oh, I don't, I don't like being in the spotlight. I don't like being seen. I don't want to, you know, ask for more than I can get. And this is a special message for you, right? Again, what's the best that could happen? Allow yourself to think radically and allow yourself to imagine radically, right? What is the absolute best that could happen? And then align with that feeling. Imagine it. And then watch what decisions and clarity that come from, from that space of doing that exercise. Be very illuminating and very freeing. Now, Banshee number five. So that is the number of change as well. You know, Banshee here says, heed my warning, dear child, for what I hold is far from unsung lullabies. Swallow a nail and you can expect bleeding from within. So <laughs> this is about resisting change, right? Banshee, you know, in Irish folklore, you know, sung of people's death, they, you know, foretold death, and it's, it's a pretty intense energy. But this is really about change. This is like the death key, right? We're also heading into that season with Samhain. This is really about the transformation that wants to happen within and for you. This is that train, you know, going in the underground and getting everything ready for you, coming up and then being quite prepared, right, to go into this next cycle, which I keep feeling like it's 2025, like this next quarter for you feels like preparation for next year. Things are going to be, you know, taken away. New things are going to be introduced. There's going to be clarity. There's going to be choices. There's going to be inspiration, right, with this Ace of Wands. So don't resist the change. Don't resist the change. Allowance, flow, co-create, right? Move or be moved. And you can choose to co-create what's moving within and around you which is the ideal, <laughs> right? Ideally, you move and are not moved, right? But this is, you know, Gemini, I really feel like you're being prepared for something, um, something that you're going to, you know, this is, this is a blueprint. This is a blueprint of the energies and lessons that are coming up for you during this time. Should you choose to work with them in this way that can, you know, make the path easier and, and help you align with what's, you know, highest and best for you, right? So ultimately, I do feel like the more you can lean into the power of the wolf, which also speaks of pack, you know, lean on your family, lean on your community, lean on your friends. There's more than enough food for everyone. I feel like I'm seeing that word community is going to be incredibly helpful for you during this time as well, because I'll tell you, you are not the only one who's going to be experiencing changes within this last quarter of the year. There's a lot going on within the collective around that. So you are a part of that tapestry 
that, and this is how you can move within that time and your own piece of the tapestry in a way that works best for you, right? Again, that wolf energy is, is so medicinal. It's so strong. You can call upon, upon it to help you become grounded and see through the darkness and illuminate what wants to be illuminated, right? When that writing on the wall gets more bold, <laughs> as it were. It's really beautiful. And there's there's also a beautiful message here as well about, you know, considering what's in the best, you know, what's the best for you as a lone wolf, but also what's best for the pack. And that can be for your given family, but it can also be for you know, the community at large and the community that you may serve in whatever way that may be. So really, 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 really beautiful. <laughs> Gemini, I'm excited for you for all this beautiful change that is coming up for you. I so hope that this helps and resonates. If so, let me know in the comments below. I, I love reading your comments. I respond to each and every one. It's my favorite part of this gig is connecting with you guys personally. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all of those good things. Um, I will be back with you soon with a specialty round of readings for your moon signs. Very exciting. And um, with that being said, just thank you. Thank you so, so much for being here. And as always, and most of all, dear Gemini, thank you for being you. And be well. Until next time.